Okay, are we ready to roll here? Yeah. All right. You guys ready for hockey season? Sure here we are. Falcon hockey, undefeated. Undefeated. We started out the year number 17 in the country. We beat Fairbanks, and we dropped to number 19. And we, dro we beat Arizona State, and we dropped to number 20. Toll and I got this figured out. If we beat Bemidji, we, there's a good chance we can drop to 25 or 30. So I don't know how that works, but... Um, uh, it's good. It's serving as a good motivator for our for our guys, and uh, we just got to continue to battle and play well, and and hopefully um, earn some respect. So, coach, if you if you lose this weekend, would you rise then in the rankings? You know what? That's a good call. If yeah, yeah, I, I'm not so sure. You know what? It's it's it, it's working for somebody. It, it, like it's a down the food chain is working for somebody because not everybody's got winning records below us. But um, the most important thing is that we're finding ways to win. Uh, uh, Billy Chrysopoulos has played uh, uh, solid. Uh, he's been uh, he was our best player up in uh, Alaska and uh, and he was one of our best players uh, uh, against Arizona. And uh, that's what we really needed to see happen. Uh, we've had to deal with a pile of of uh, early season injuries. We've got uh, three guys right now on concussion protocol. Um, we've lost Evan Fino for the season. Uh, we, we've got a, a, the largest roster that we've ever had, and it's a good thing because uh, um, we're having to use guys that we didn't think we were going to have to use um, for till, till maybe uh, you get into this stuff with midseason. But um, we've been getting dinged up. But, you know, the bad, that's the bad news. The good news is, is – uh, you know the most encouraging thing. Uh, our goaltending has been has been sound, and uh, and our guys are finding ways to win. Uh, they all haven't been uh, uh, pretty, uh, but uh, our, our last uh, effort was probably our best effort. It's probably our best third period effort for sure. And uh, uh, Friday we just uh, basically survived that game. On Saturday I thought we did a lot better job of managing uh, our lead in the third period. So were you at all? Were you at all concerned maybe that Billy would miss a step because Shane played so much last year that now he's really stepping into that full-time role? Well, B Billy isn't Shane, and, and there was a reason Shane was our starting goalie. There's a reason the, uh, that the Edmonton, Edmonton Oilers signed him. Um, he, he was a, an outstanding collegiate goalie, and um, we knew we had uh, – uh, a good goalie, an adequate goalie in Billy, but how good? You just don't know until until they, he, a guy gets in there and gets a chance. And, again, even this is a short sampling, but it's, it's sure encouraging to have him do well in the, in the early season in this short sampling. You know, if he's able to do it in the first four games, he should be able to, be, to, to do it after this. Uh, how, you know, is he going to be able to do it with consistency? That's the question that's yet to be answered. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, that was a, those are big shoes to fill. Shane Sterrett was our best player last year. And um, so, you know, we had a real good team. We've got, we've got uh, uh, just about all of our guys back. We only lost three seniors. Um, but, but in addition to that, you know, we lost our best player, who was, a, who was our sophomore goalie, Shane Sterrett. And then coming into this year, you know, now uh, uh, Evan Fino was ready, really ready to have a breakout season and, and blew his knee out up in Fairbanks. So he's out for the season, which is, I feel so bad for him. He's worked so hard to prepare for this. So, you know, but, uh, you know, we've just got to, uh, uh, we've got to move on and it is what it is. And the uh, next guy's going to have to step in. Remember last year we lost um, three guys. Uh, we lost uh, Pulver and Kopaka and Tyran, uh, all three of those guys to season ending injuries. And we were still able to, to, to get to the NCAA tournament. We've got more depth now than we had last year. And, and uh, it looks as though we're going to, we're going to need that. Scoring wise, it's a small sample, just five games, but around three goals a game, is that okay with you? Would you like more? Well, I, it, it all depends on how many the other team gets. I mean, like, I'm, I'm fine. I don't care if we only score one as long as they don't get any. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously, you know, coaches are coaches. They, they always want more goals for. They always want less goals against. Um, it, it, you know, by the, the bottom line, we're finding ways to win right now. Um, we're, we're not getting outplayed. The times that we got into trouble, we, we've gotten ourselves into trouble, uh, self-inflicted wounds. Um, so, we, you know, we haven't faced anything yet that, that's overpowering. We're going, to, we're going to be facing our biggest test uh, this weekend against Bemidji. Bemidji uh, is not ranked in the top 20, and they should be. Um, they, they've got virtually 
uh, all of their guys back from last year. They've got their senior goalie who who was all league and has a has the potential to be um, all American. Uh, they've got a defenseman White Cloud that's going to he's going to sign with the NHL as soon as the season's over. Um, they've got those Fitzgerald triplets who are outstanding, skillful players that are all seniors now. Kyle Bowman, um, you know Bemidji's on a high cycle. This is their year. Um, they need to make things happen this year, and uh, uh, I'll be I'll be surprised if that's uh, they they might be you know obviously we know all about Denver and uh, uh, the the defending national champions and they're on our uh, they're on our schedule but uh, you know Bemidji very well may be the next best team on our schedule um, after Denver. Well, coach, I don't know a whole lot about Bemidji. I know your brother's the coach. And you got him in the hair department. That's about all. I Absolutely, know. and the height, by the way. If you, in case you didn't notice, I got. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, that's all I got going right now. I got hair and height, you know, and uh, yeah. What kind of edge does that give you then, if any? Right now, they're undefeated. We're undefeated. Battle of the undefeated uh, should be a fun luncheon. Um, you know, he'll he'll be my biggest foe in terms of winning the luncheon. Um, he's a pretty good luncheon guy himself. Um, he's got a lot of ammunition going back. 60 years. No, I guess not. He doesn't have that many. He's 54. So 54 years. Um, the statute of limitations is up on most of the evil things I did to him as a child. And I'm sure that he's going to want to get back at me for all of that um, in those games this weekend. All of that and more. Um, hopefully his son will help me deter that a little bit. In all seriousness, how does this game end up on your schedule? Did you just call your brother up and say, hey, we... It was, it was negotiated. Um, he gave me his son, and I gave him a game. That's that's how it went down. Yep, uh, I gave actually two games. He uh, he gave me his his son, and uh, I gave him a, a game this year. And they're going to come back out here next year. Is yeah. Matt going to play? Uh, I I don't know. He's uh, he's cleared. Um, he did practice yesterday, and I haven't talked to him today. He had a good practice yesterday, and uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to him, but. Um, you know, we're optimistic that he's going to be able to get in. You know, that's one of the, the other, one thing I didn't mention. I mentioned Fino, and I mentioned, you know, the you know, I guess he was included in the, in the guys with the uh, concussion protocol. But you know, uh, you know, having, you know, we're we're three zero and one without two of our best forwards. Uh, well, Fino's played one game, and uh, Saratori's played none. So, you know, guys are filling in, and and we're finding a way to get it done. But uh, like I said, this weekend will be. Without question, our, our strongest test to date. Um, they 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 are a top twenty team. Um, hey, they beat Duluth. They beat five to two on Friday night in their building. Then they went down to Duluth, and they tied the, the next night. And they won in the they won in a shootout. Um, you know uh, uh, they did they did the NCHC shootout in Duluth. Um, so you know they beat and tied Duluth, and uh, um, and uh, you know we're we're. You know we're doing well. They're doing well, but I can tell you right now, like it just—it's just a fact. They're on the top of their cycle. Um, their team is as loaded for bear as as they're going to be. Uh, we play them again next year, and uh, they're going to—you know—they're losing a lot uh, after this year. They lose a lot, and um, yeah. So we're going into a tough place. We're going in shorthanded, and um, you know I like the situation we're in. You know we're going in. We're going to be going going in as underdogs. I think you know just because of the the, the uh, injury situation, and that's fine with me. I mean we're going to go in. We're going to go uh, play against a really good team, and and uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about ourselves. Um, I'm curious during the season, your brother's a coach, been coach doing this for a long time. You have as well. Do you lean on him and vice versa during the season, or do you, you're so busy that you catch our up staff at Thanksgiving? talk. Our staffs talk a lot. I mean, we recruit on different ends of the spectrum. You know, um, uh, 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 we have to recruit all Amer all U.S. born kids. Um, they can recruit Americans, but also Canadians and Europeans. Um, you know, academically, uh, it's a little bit uh, difference between Bemidji State and, and and the Air Force Academy. Uh, there's we see players that we that academically um, are, are are qualified, but can't get into the academy. And if we think they're real good players, we we. I, we most certainly pass those names on to, to the staff in Bemidji. And to be honest with you, the other way around too. When they see a kid that uh, is an elite student that's looking for uh, an Ivy League type education, uh, they pass those names 
uh, our way. So, to, and tactically, we we have you know you're going to see a lot of, of similar similarities in our team because you know tactically we like to recruit the same kind of players. Um, we play the the same type of uh, up tempo game. So there's there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, genetic similarities between the the Falcons and the Beavers. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of Air Force hockey, are you guys are you doing anything trying to remind the players of just what their impact is and the tradition you guys have here with the program? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, we had our alumni deal last week, and an alumni came back from all uh, over the country, and uh, you know, I think it, it, it you know it's more for the alumni. Uh, you know, when you're young and you're playing and all that, you know, you know, 20 years, 25, 30, 35 years. Actually, it's my 60th anniversary this this year of my birth, so it's my anniversary year too. So I'm I'm older than the Falcons. I mean, well, you know, what's that say? My God, I've been around longer than this Air Force hockey program. But uh, uh, we 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 haven't, you know, I we haven't really pushed anything with the players uh, about it. You know, there's things that are going to be going on. We wore a throwback jersey last week against Arizona State. You know, and uh, you know the uh, the same jerseys that were worn the first year here at, at, at the academy and um, we're and we've got a 50th anniversary coin that's got you know the the four coaches on it and uh and some other uh, some other stuff on it as well and uh you know mil the military the coins are big in the military and and so we've got that going we, we've got there's a lot of things going on and i guess grant i just haven't had a chance to i wasn't prepared for that you should uh, you, you need to send that one um ahead uh and i can I can come in a little bit more loaded. That maybe that's one Dave Toller can answer. Um, uh, but uh, it's all part of the fake news. that that oh, fake news, man, fake news. It's all out there. Yep. So you're not gonna you're not gonna go with like 1950 skate or 1960 skates and ads and equipment. No, that's not happening. Um, like uh, I've got the 60 year hair going. Um, you know, that was one thing my brother told me last year. Really, he said uh, that one of my buddies from Bemidji called him and uh, and said, "Hey, my brother was like, hey, so and so has called me about about uh, you know why he was watching the game." And I'm going like, "Man, my buddy's gonna say, hey, I love watching your team. They work hard. They're so tough to play against.'" And he goes, "Hey, tell Franco on HD TV, he's really thinning out on the top. You know, so I mean, when he gets down to it, like how important is hockey? You know, I just need to find a way to get some more hair."